he wanted to get back at people that he was he didn't like and he kind of loved David and his heart would soften and then he really didn't like David so David did not trust King Saul now King Saul was God's anointed God had put King Saul on the throne and so David was respectful to King Saul even though King Saul treated him that way so David and his mighty men were running and they went to the land of Haran and they were it was kind of a wildernessy place and they were hiding out now, none of us know what that's like to hide for our lives, do we? We don't know what that's like. We live in safe places. But David and his men were hiding. And they were hiding in an area where there was a really rich man, and his name was Nabal. And his wife's name was Abigail. And all this time that David was hiding there, oh, David was, he was protecting his sheep. He was like a wall around. The Bible said he was like a wall around all of Nabal's sheep. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. Now, back then, that meant you were really, really a rich person. And so, as, as time went on, it came to the sheep shearing time. I don't know if you've ever seen a sheep being sheared, but they cut the, they, they cut the, they cut the wool right off of the sheep. The sheep were big and fluffy, and when they, when they got sheared, they were skinny. And tiny looking and so it was kind of a festival and, and in the land it was a custom to have like a big party during sheep sharing time well David and his men were hungry you ever been really hungry and not known where your next meal was coming from well they were hungry and so David sent a few of his very best men to go to Nabal and ask him to share during this time of festival share some of his food with them which was also customary to give things to people if they really needed it. And so they went in front of Nabal and they asked him if he had anything that they could share with him. And they explained, we've been out here in the wilderness protecting your flocks all this time. And Nabal, who was not a nice man, said, who, does, who is David? Who does David think? that I should share with him. Now, if we have more than enough, 
enough? Should we always share with people in need? We should. That's what Jesus wants us to do. But Nabal did not have Jesus in his heart. And so David and or David's men went back to David and told him what he said. Oh, that made David very angry. Okay. Now it's not always good to have anger in our hearts and revenge in our hearts either. So David got on his horse and he got some men with him and they got their armor on and they decided he was going to go kill Nabal. Was that the right thing to do? No, no. And and luckily for David, one of David's men told Abigail's one of Abigail's servants, Nabal's wife, what David was about to do. Okay. And so that she, they ran and told Abigail, and Abigail was a wise woman. She was a peacemaker. Is that the kind of hearts we should have? Yes. Yeah. We should be peacemakers, that's for sure. And so he went and told Abigail, and Abigail said, oh, no, I don't want him to kill my husband. And, you know, who knows who else could be, you know, hurt in this conflict. And so she got donkeys. She got several donkeys out. And back then they ate raisin cakes, and they ate figs, and they had roasted wheat, and they ate lamb, and she got, oh, she got piles of food together. And she put them all on the donkeys, and, and she, she roped it all down so it wouldn't fall off the donkeys, and she led, she herself led the donkeys to go, to go meet David. It was on his way to hurt her husband because he's angry. <clears throat> and so she approached, as she approached, David and his men stopped. And you know what she did? She got down on the ground, and I do if I thought I could get back up. <laughs> she got down on the ground, and she bowed all the way down to the ground. You know, back then, we don't, we don't do that here to our world leaders or to even important people. But back then, if you wanted to show deep respect, you got down on your knees laid on the ground. You put your head all the way down to the ground. And that's what Abigail did. So first of all, she showed David deep respect, didn't she? Great respect. And then she said, please, David, let God deal with my husband in his wicked ways. And she said, you know, please do not hurt him. And David was very moved by the way she was acting towards him. And, and he, and all of a sudden he thought, oh, this would be a terrible mistake for me to go in there and kill her husband and, you know, wreak all this havoc with all the people in her household. <clears throat> and so David was happy that Abigail had stopped him from killing her husband. And so, you know, God has a way of taking care of all things if we just let him, doesn't he? He does. We have to trust him. And so David went away and he thanked Abigail for the food. When Abigail got home, her husband was having a big party, and he was drunk. He had been drinking. And so she decided not to tell him until the next day that David was actually on his way to kill him. And when she told him, it terrified him. It's like, I could have been killed. I was having this party. I didn't even know who I was because I was drunk, and I could have been killed. So it scared him, and all of a sudden, the Bible says he was struck with a paralysis. You know what that is? That means you can't move. Some have said it's, you know, your heart. Some said it was a heart problem or paralysis. And in 10 days, he died. Nathan died. Okay. And so David married Abigail. And they went to go hide. He had to pick up and move because that caused a lot of people talking. And, and when things like that happen and you're trying to hide, you have to pick up and you have to move again. Because he didn't trust Saul. We know why he didn't trust Saul. Saul was Saul jealous. Was mean. Well, Saul was mean, but he was very jealous of David. He didn't want David getting the throne because God had anointed him. And so they went to hide with the Philistines. And Saul was terrified because he thought David had, you know, that David had uh, teamed up with the Philistines, and he knew the Philistines were getting ready to fight him in another battle. And so Saul was terrified. So Saul decided he was going to pray to God. He prayed and he prayed and nothing happened. He didn't get any answers at all. And so, well, you know why? You know why God did not favor Saul? Because Saul had rejected Samuel. <coughs> and at this time, Samuel had died. 
Samuel, and the whole nation mourned Samuel. Samuel was God's prophet. He was God's head prophet, probably, because there were several prophets at the time. But he rejected him. Saul did not like Samuel. He wouldn't listen to his advice. Saul also was chasing David, who was, and he chased him away. And Saul also killed priests in God's temple. And so God did not favor Saul. And so God did not answer his prayer at all. And so Saul decided he was going to take it into his own hands. He was going to visit a person called a medium. And a medium, sometimes we call them witches, okay? They're bad people. And we have to stay away from those kind of people. But these people think that they can call back people from the dead. But we know that when people die that they can't talk, right? And they're not living anymore, they're not breathing anymore, and we can't have any conversations with them. In the Bible, we know what it says, that the living will die and they know and they know that they will die, and then when they're but dead, they will they know nothing. 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 <laughs> right. And so, but then but mediums. They can see people. But a medium, you know who she talks to, or he, you know who they talk to? They talk to Satan and his evil angels. And those evil angels and Satan can sound like someone that has died, and they can look like them, and they think that they can bring them back from the dead. But really, it's just Satan and his evil angels acting like someone who has died. And so Saul went to this lady, and she was terrified, because back in that day, Samuel had decreed, the prophet when he was living, that all mediums should be killed. Okay, So she was hiding in a cave. And Saul found her and went to her and asked her to bring back Samuel, because he wanted answers. Saul wanted answers. He wanted to know if he went into battle, if he was going to win or not against the Philistines. And finally, he, he talked her into this because she was afraid of him. And um, she did. She called back Samuel. But it really wasn't Samuel. It wasn't Samuel. Who was it? Satan. It was Satan. Or one of his evil angels. And he told Saul that you and your sons are going to die in the battle. And oh, Saul. He was, he was overcome. He was overcome. And he fell on the floor, and he wouldn't get up. And, of course, the evil angel went away, fell down on the floor, and the medium made him some food and his men, and finally she, she got him up and got him to eat the food, and then Saul left. Now, our story kind of ends there today, okay? Because the battle is next week's story. But... As you can see, what a sad story today, because if Saul had only listened to God, would he have made it okay? He would have. If Nabal had not had a wicked heart, would he have been okay as well? If he had obeyed God, he would have. So let's remember some things here. Let's remember that, do we want to be jealous of each other? And do we want to be selfish? No. And above yeah. all, we want to obey, don't we? We want to obey God, and we want to obey, and obeying God, we also obey our parents, right? Because they're choosing God's way, and they want the best for you as well. So you've been really good listeners.